Good morning guys. Long time no see. Today is a special treat for me. Very rare. I get the morning and afternoon to myself. So what better way to spend it than going to Ohio's largest secondhand bookstore. So yeah, we got Panera, vanilla chai tea, and then I got a breakfast sandwich and a chocolate croissant because you can't go to Panera without a chocolate croissant. Let's go ahead and finish this breakfast and then I cannot wait to show you this warehouse. It will be my first time as well. It's called Dollar Book Swap. It's in Dayton, Ohio, and I'm in Cincinnati, so I've got to drive about an hour. And it's filled, guys, filled with DVDs, books, audiobooks, like all kinds of things. And it's all $1.25. So I'm going to be in heaven today. I am like a new reader. In the last few years, I started reading here and there. And what really sparked my love for reading, again, was the Bridgerton series obsessed with the show watched it many many times obsessed with the books i've read them twice so i am ready to start a new series i have a buddy that just pulled in <laughs> but we have to go ahead and try this croissant i'm obsessed with theirs my husband thinks panera has the superior croissants but i mean these are ginormous and i think they're filled with more chocolate at panera mmm always ahead I am so excited I honestly don't know what to do with myself I always have the baby or on the weekends I'm with my husband and baby we love family time I literally cannot get enough of him or her so this is like so bizarre done by myself <laughs> okay let's go all of the reviews <laughs> said it looks kind of sketch you just kind of drive around the back and then you go into the back of a warehouse I guess where it looks like it's for employees only but it's not so let's see oh my there's a lot of cars you and me together now bucks for 30 bucks are you kidding me everything was a dollar 25 they had gorgeous coffee table books for dollar 25 those are like 65 plus dollars on amazon and they're stunning the colors are just chef's kiss literally cannot wait to use these and display them in our home um i got van gogh and just so many good artists it's gorgeous um, I got a lot of classics I can't wait to share with you. They did not have much Jane Austen. It was very, very picked over. They had four books. They were on all paperback and very worn. <laughs> so I went ahead and skipped those. I'll just get a matching collection on Amazon. Um, but yeah, wow. Well, I'm in heaven. So that is so cool. 22 bucks for $30. Are you kidding me? That seems criminal. It should be like... Like Barnes and Noble's two books for thirty dollars. If you're lucky, usually it's like two for forty. So this is awesome. Okay, let's get home and I'll go ahead and do book haul. All right, so I am home and back from the dollar book swap. Dayton, Ohio has some hidden gems. There's a lot of rough areas, but there's also like. This was such a hit and it made my heart totally sing and be so happy seeing loads of people. I did not expect it to be so packed. There's like four or five people per aisle for a lot of it. And I'm just happy that people are reading. I love that. So yeah, that was amazing. And I am so excited. Okay, so we got 22 bucks. 
I didn't realize until I was showing my husband that I have a duplicate of one book, two different versions, so I'll gift one. And yeah, so like I said, I'm new to reading in the last few years. I've been slowly collecting. This is my tiny bookshelf. It's overflowing, as you can see. I'm like starting to pile them. And I would love to have one room just totally dedicated to like all the walls being library shelves and like couches, maybe the homeschool table in there. Something like that is like totally future planning. But yes, I want to start collecting for a giant home library. I think it's just so cozy. It's so nice. It teaches you to live in the simplistic times and just quiet your mind. I think reading is so good for you. And yeah, I'm overflowing this. So I need to start researching which units I want to get next. Ignore right here. This is my daughter's scrapbooking stuff. She's almost two guys. Like that's insane. So I'm starting her scrapbook and that's where I'm just keeping it all. We live in a small space right now. So I have to get creative with all the nicks and crannies. But yeah, let's just go ahead and hop into the haul. This is like way too long of an intro and I'm excited. Okay, so I'm going to save Nicholas Sparks for the end um, because most of it is from Nicholas Sparks. So I want to show the other stuff first so it's not just like Nicholas, 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 you know. It's Water for Elephants. I've heard amazing things about this book. Um, even Stephen King wrote a review for it saying, Heroes, Villains, Romance, A Wild Animal Stampede. Big fun from page one. And he's a great author. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm kind of going to go into this not really knowing what it's about. I want to be surprised. I don't want to go into it knowing too much. Thankfully, the back doesn't really give anything away at all. It's just like reviews. So yeah, I'm excited about that one. I got some gorgeous. I love vintage things totally into the vintage cottage core aesthetic love it so much um so i found some beautiful old books um this one has a beautiful oh my gosh just the texture of these hardcover books is so different than today's like kind of like canvas hard texture i love them um so this is the red pony and it's adorable adorable um this was in the classics section Okay, so this one was published in 1945, this copy. So that's pretty dang old. Um, I'm really excited about this one. Yeah, so the Red Pony. Anything horse related, totally into it. I only got one children's book, which I am so proud of myself because if I go thrifting anywhere, I'm constantly looking for children's books and things that she can read later on in life. And yeah, I found one really cute book. It's Mother Goose. And she has a Mother Goose doll that she is obsessed with. And it sings like all the nursery rhymes to her. So this one is like just basic nursery rhymes that are just so cute and classic. Um, like Old Mother Goose. And let's see if I know any of the others. Some of these I don't know. Obviously Old MacDonald. Buckle My Shoe. Uh, Little Miss Muffet. And Little Miss Tucket. Rain, rain, go away, little Bo Peep, just classics, you know, and the illustrations are stunning. So I'm excited to read this to Oakland, and she totally knows a bunch of these songs from her little TV shows she watches. So that's it for the kids. I got the Rover Boys on Treasure Isle, and I know this is a classic. It's in great condition. Um, this copy was, let's see, 1909. That's how old this book is, 1909, and it's in this great condition. That's insane. So this will be beautiful on my little shelf. Um, I got the Scarlet Letter. I know it's a classic. Um, I did not read that in school. I don't know if that was assigned or not, but I definitely did not read it. This is Where or When, and the front was really good. It says, who hasn't dreamed about reuniting with one's first love? Where or when indulges the fantasy? Then sets it afire. This is a seductive read from Vogue. That was their review. Um, the back says, What would you do if out of the blue you received a letter from your first love? Sion Richard sees no reason why she can't write a book to Charles Callahan. After all, it's been 30 years and they are both married families. But then they decide to meet again. An innocent correspondence becomes a dangerous intimacy. Swept up in the past and consumed by an obsessive love. Charles and Cyan risk everything to be together. Um, 
a heart-wrenching, suspenseful story with an unforgettable conclusion. That sounded pretty interesting and it's not very thick read. I looked up the author on Amazon Books and she has great reviews, so I thought I'd give her a shot. Another one of Anita Shreve, this is Resistance. And this one is a simple story set in terrible times. I reached the last chapter with hungry eyes wanting more. Los Angeles Times. So for this one, it was saying, in a Nazi-occupied Belgian village, Claire, the wife of a resistance worker, shelters a wounded American bomber pilot in a secret attic hideaway. As she nurses him back to health, Claire falls in love and soon locked in a passionate affair. She seems strong enough to conquer all. Uh, I'm not going to read it anymore because it's quite long, but that sounded really good. Uh, let's see. The cover of this is gorgeous. Love love anything with fruit. I think it's so beautiful. Um, an apple orchard. Songs of the humpback whale. In the back, totally sounded interesting. I'm totally gonna butcher this author's name. My apologies. Uh, I think it's Jodi Picoults. Honestly, the cover is what really got me. Um, let's see. So, totally into Renaissance and Regency eras, uh, Victorian. Like, I love the periodic romances. This one's First Impressions by Charlie... L oh, wait. Let's see. Oh, my leg's cramping. Um, a novel of old books, Unexpected Love, and Jane Austen. Love me some Jane Austen. So this is First Impressions by Charlie Lovett. So I'm just going to sum it up real quick. Um, at the top, it just says, Could Jane Austen have stolen the plot of Pride and Prejudice? And then when I'm like scrolling through the bottom... Um, it says, working against the clock to uncover the truth, Sophie must also choose between two suitors. Winston, a dashing, seductive publisher, a dashing, seductive publishing executive, and Eric Hall, a pushy American academic with whom she shared one stolen, unforgettable kiss. Can she trust her first impressions? Or must Sophie put together a life in the wrong man's hands? Um, yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. So I think it's like a twist. On Jane Austen books. I've seen this cover in people's halls before so I figured I'd give it a shot. I'm not sure if it's part of a series or not. The Queen of Hearts and this is by Kemery Martin. Um, so at the very top it says a debut novel set against a background of hospital rounds and life or death decisions that pulses with humor and empathy as it explores the heart's capacity for forgiveness. So we'll give that a shot. Okay, now we're getting into, all right, I'm saving the coffee table books for the very end. Now we have some Nicholas Sparks. The only one I have read from him is Nights in Rodanthe, and that was many years ago. I have lost the copy since then, so I did pick it up again, and it is fantastic. Totally love it. It's like an older book, um couples love so like i think they're like in their 50s or 60s and they find love unexpectedly in an inn and they end up falling for each other and this takes place in north carolina and i love north carolina so just that film in general and that book in general is so good um so i did pick it up again and i had did the movie copy before and now i have the original um cover to better sweet romance blooms you'll cry in spite of yourself and it really is a very good book i have the choice and it's a hardback guys i can't believe these are dollar 25 that's just so insane i have not read this one um i'm trying to sum it up let's see uh, it says travis parker has everything a man could want a good job loyal friends even a waterfront home in a small town north carolina in full pursuit of the good life, boating, swimming, regular barbecues with his close buddies, he holds a vague conviction that a serious relationship with a woman would only cramp his style. That is until Gabby Holland moves in next door. So that should be good. Um, we have the last song. I have not read this. It's kind of thick. Um, but I am obsessed with the movie. This is the one with Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth when they're young. Such a good movie, so I can't wait to read the book. We have The Wedding, Nicholas Sparks, and I have not read this. This is, after 30 years, Wilson Lewis is forced to face a painful truth. His wife, Jane, has fallen out of love with him. 
It is entirely his fault. Despite the shiny example of his in-laws, Noah and Allie, and their 50-year love affair, Wilson is unable to express his true feelings. He has spent too little time at home and too much time at the office. Now his daughter is about to marry and his wife is thinking about leaving him. But if Wilson is sure of anything, it's this. His love for Jane has grown over the years and he will do anything he can to save their marriage. So that sounds interesting. That would be kind of hard to play in a wedding knowing yours is failing. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be difficult. Uh, Nicholas Sparks, True Believer. This is a hardback as well. And this one. Um, one day you're going to learn something that can't be explained with science. And when that happens, when that happens, your life's going to change in ways you can't imagine. So, oh, someone looks like someone cut this page. <laughs> yeah, this was a library book at one point. But yeah, I'm excited. Okay, I was a silly goose and I totally bought two Dear Johns, obsessed with the film, but I do not need two copies and they're like both brand new. So I'll figure out which one I wanna keep and then I'll gift one. Um, they're both beautiful. They both had different horses. Same book, maybe I'll keep this one. Okay, Dear John is fantastic. Um, a girl named Savannah comes into his life. John knows he is ready to turn a new leaf. An angry rebel. He is enlisted in the army after high school, knowing not knowing what else to do. Then, during a furlough, he meets Savannah, the girl of his dreams. The attraction is mutual and quickly grows into one of a kind love that leaves Savannah vowing to wait for John until he finishes his tour of duty. But neither can foresee that 9-11 is about to change the world. Like so many proud men and women... John must choose between the love and his country. Now, when he finally returns to North Carolina, John will discover that loving Savannah will force him to make the hardest decision of his life. This movie is super good. It has Channing Tatum and, um, uh, what is her name? She's the blonde one, the main character in Mamma Mia. Why is my mind blinking? Why do I feel like her real name is Savannah? Maybe it's not. <laughs> um... What is her name? You know what I'm talking about, though. Those are the characters in this movie, and it is fantastic. Um, I'll keep this one aside for a gift. I have two more from Nicholas Sparks and the rest are coffee books. This is The Best of Me. That is a beautiful cover as well. In the spring of 1984, high school students Amanda and Dawson fell deeply, irrevocably in love. Though they were from opposite sides of the tracks, their love for each other seemed to defy the realities of life in a small town. Of North Carolina. A loner from a violent, infamous local family, Dawson believed his love for Amanda promised an escape from the darker destiny laid out for him. A golden girl from a well-to-do family with plans to attend Duke University, Amanda saw something in Dawson that spoke to her own rebellious and passionate heart. But as the summer of their senior year came to a close, unforeseen events would tear the young couple apart, setting them on radically divert paths. Uh, so now, 25 years later, Amanda and Dawson are summoned back to North Carolina for a funeral. Um, neither has lived the life they imagined, and neither can forget the passionate first love that first changed their lives. Let's see. Oh, it continues on to the back. Oh, yeah, it keeps going and going. So anyways, just that alone so far sounds really good. So it sounds like lovers separated by paths, and then they come back together once they're, like, totally grown and lived out their own lives that sounds pretty good last one is at first sight and this is nicholas sparks as well this one there are a few things that jeremy marsh was sure he'd never do he'd never leave new york city never give his heart away after barely surviving one failed marriage and never become a parent now jeremy is living in a tiny town of boone creek North Carolina engaged to Lexi Darnell, the love of his life, and anticipating the start of their family. But just as his life seems to be settling into a blissful pattern, a mysterious and disturbing email sets off a chain of events that would change the course of the young couple's marriage. How well do we really know the ones we love? How do we handle the inevitable doubts, fears concerning parenthood, and stumbling blocks are sometimes placed in our way? Continuing the story of the young couple introduced by the true believer this novel... Captures all heartbreak, tension, romance, and surprises for all of those who are newlywed. 
This one sounds the least interesting to me, but it might be really good. So I want to give it a shot. Okay, so the last three are these giant coffee books, guys. And these are about authors um, of their time and kind of like biographies of them. And it includes some of their work. But these colors sitting on a table, are you kidding me? Those are stunning. Like hunter green, this like rustic red, and then a beige. Love it. So we have the world of Michelangelo. So pretty. And then when you flip through it, it has a bunch of his art. These are so expensive on Amazon, by the way. So when I found for $1.25, I almost wanted to get like all 50 of them, but I made myself choose three. <laughs> um, it has work, the architecture back then, about his life, what inspired his paintings. He did a lot of naked paintings. Yeah. So that looks pretty good. Um, what else did we get? So Michelangelo, we have the world of Van Gogh. Also, these would be good for my daughter when she's a lot older. So 1953 to 1890. Let's see some of his work. Starry Night is obviously the most popular, so it's interesting seeing his other work. It's pretty sunflower fields. Okay, that's Mr. Van Gogh. Oh, did I put that in the wrong way? And then the last one is the world of Rubens. I'm pretty sure it's how you pronounce the name. Love that kind of artwork, like water paints, um, oils, and just, oh, I love it. So pretty. Okay, so this is 1577 to 1640. And gorgeous. Really, really pretty. Yeah, so I'm gonna stack those on top of each other. I think they're gorgeous bucks. Um, there's a ton more, so maybe I'll get more, who knows. But yeah, those are the ones that sparked my interest. This visit, and that concludes my first book haul on here, guys. Um, I hope you liked it. And I cannot wait to go back. I will definitely be a regular at this bookstore and making a lot more book hauls. Like I said, I want to fill like a whole wall of different books. So maybe I'll do like Robert Patterson or Stephen King or something next time. So if you have read any of these books, please leave a comment down below on like if you liked it or not and some of your favorite books. So I know what to look for next time. I had a blast. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I will be posting way more book hauls coming forward along with cooking videos and whatnot. So please subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.